The Manchester United under-18 side has been absolutely flying this season. After just 19 games, the team find themselves on 50 points, having dropped points on just three occasions so far. Two draws and one loss in recent weeks. But apart from that, they have been absolutely flying. More goals scored than anyone else in the competition, and they also have the second best defensive record. And the team looks something a little bit like this. And with the team flying so well at the moment, there is the question, could this be the next class of 92? You know, the class of 24? I thought we would take a look at some of the players. And as you can see, we're going to start off with Eli Harrison in goal. 18 years old, the modern day goalkeeper. And what do I mean by that? Comfortable with the ball at his feet. Really calm and composed when he has the ball in these situations. But not only is he a player which can play out from the back, he's also a player who can go long as well. He has a really good blend of distribution in these areas. So, for example, he can play his short passing game out from the back, as you would expect from the modern day keeper. But also, he does have that ability to go long. And this is something which I still believe is very, very important for goalkeepers. Sometimes the opposition are going to press you simply too well. You don't really have that short pass option. You have to be able to find these longer range passes, either into channels, into the feet of wingers, up to the chest of a striker, or even over the opposition defence. These are all tools which Harrison has. Something which really highlights just how confident he is on the ball is the fact that he will often step into a back three between the two centre-backs. This really shows just how much he wants to play with the ball at his feet. And again, it's the exact reason I give him that label of the modern day goalkeeper. He also ticks this box in terms of sweeping actions as well. So when his defence is playing a high line and perhaps the ball comes over the top from the opposition like so, he is happy to come off his line and try and sweep up and deal with these situations. Now, of course, he is still incredibly young. He makes mistakes. He's a very raw talent. Goalkeeper is one of the most scrutinised positions, but I think he's doing really well. In terms of the next stage of his development, he does need to bulk up a little bit. He does need to grow into his frame because he's not the tallest goalkeeper in the first place. So therefore, he is going to be need to be quite strong and, and robust if he's to have any chance of commanding his penalty area. Of course, the other thing which makes it difficult is at the club, there's only one goalkeeper position. And Onana's got that at the moment. And then under him is Bayinde. So for Harrison to really break into the team, he's probably going to need some injuries or a loan move elsewhere. I'm interested to hear where you guys think he could go on loan next season. But either way, the 18-year-old is a really good young goalkeeper. I like the look of him. And who knows, one day he might be a first-team Manchester United player. The same for Harry Amas at left-back, a player which we have spoke about before. Really good. Really good. We have done a full in-depth video if you want to go check it out. Amas is just a quality left back. And again, what I really like about him is he captures pretty much everything you want from a modern day fullback. He can do pretty much everything. Tactically, he can play several different roles. He can be someone which overlaps in the final third. He can underlap in the final third. But also he can pop up in midfield, play as an inverted fullback and play his passes from here. One of the reasons he is so capable of doing this is because his technical quality is truthfully just a joke. Really, really good with the ball at his feet, really good in tight spaces, able to find a pass to get his way out of the press, just really effective in this first phase, but also in the second phase as well. What I like the most though about his game at the moment is the fact that he can get into the final third. And in terms of in a couple of years time, perhaps making that leap up to the first team, this is the most easily transferable skill. Getting wide, going on an overlap, putting a ball into the box. It's quite similar at youth level to what it is at senior level. So this is definitely something which he could take with him should he move through the age groups, which I think he will. I think he will. He's a really good player. And I wonder if his development is the reason why Manchester United let Alvaro Fernandez go. Possibly. Possibly. But again, a really good young player. Bags of technical ability. Speaking of technical ability, Amir Ibrahimov. Wow. This is some player. He is almost everything you could want in a modern day footballer. Firstly, he's versatile. He can play somewhere in the front three. He can play out wide. He can play up front. A variety of positions. He can also play in the 10 position. He done that a bit more last year. This year, he is now very much playing as an eight a lot of the time in a double pivot. And truthfully, he looks brilliant wherever he plays. And it's because of his incredible technical ability, but also his really good use of his body. This for me is what always separates the average young players from the best ones. A lot of these young players have, te have technical ability. Academy football really encourages it these days. The players which stand out, in my opinion, 
are the ones which are physically capable of handling themselves. It's why I think Kobe Mania has made a step up so well, because physically he's a strong, robust player. We've got another one here. The young Russian is very, very robust in the tackle. He's really good at riding challenges and also showing the cuter side of the game as well. Dribbles into the final third of the pitch, carrying the ball forward through the thirds and then producing in the final third using both feet to manipulate the ball and also having the ability to strike the ball from distance. What his best position will be in the future, I'm not too sure. I wonder if he eventually drifts into the 10. But right now he's playing as an eight and he's playing really very well. So before we continue into the video, a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, jerseyfifa.com, the home of all of the greatest football kits. Whether that be the new latest releases or the old classic ones like this, Jersey FIFA has something for everyone. And now you can check it out yourself using the link in the description down below. And also make sure to use code JERSEYFIFA for 10% off when you order. Continuing with the incredible young Manchester United players, Bendito Mantato. We've got him on the left wing here, but in my opinion, the 16-year-old is more of a right winger. But we've just got so many good attacking players, I've had to put him on the left for this video. But when he plays on the right-hand side, let's move this guy over here. This is such a bright young player. We'll talk about what he does on the ball in a second, because I'm really impressed with that side of his game. But what I'm really impressed by more is what he does off the ball. Someone who can actually play as a fullback, it captures the defensive side of his game. And not only the defensive capabilities and the defensive techniques, but the work rate. That's a really important thing for a young player. Again, it's what helps these young players come into the team. Someone like Garnacho, if you can come into the side and work incredibly hard, it's going to really ease the transition into the first team for you. It's going to help the fans get behind you. Mantato does that. He is a good defensive player, someone who is going to track back and do his work for the team. But importantly... He offers plenty on the ball as well. Again, screams technical quality. He's really good on the ball. He's left-footed, but he's very capable of manipulating the ball with either foot. I would describe him probably as an inside forward. Someone who wants to come inside onto his left foot, shift the ball with both feet, but then when it comes to shooting, this is a left-footed player. Somebody wants to get into these positions and either curl them into the far corner or drill them hard and low at the near post, but his finishing is really good. Four goals in a recent game against Blackburn where he was absolutely scintillating. His finishing was top that day. And the threat is quite clear for all to see. I have seen comparisons to Bakayo Saka. And of course, that's high praise indeed. He is nowhere near that level at the moment. But in terms of the style of play, yeah, I guess I do understand it a little bit. That ability to play on the right-hand side, come inside onto your left foot, the defensive work rate and also the all-round technical ability and ball striking makes Mantato a really good young player. Someone who I am hoping to see more of as we move into next season. Probably... A little bit behind the rest of the players on the list, in my opinion. But again, give it a year, give it two years. He could explode. He could go to that next level. And who knows? He might be on the summer tour this season for Manchester United. Another player who's got a good chance of being on the tour, particularly in the year of the Euros, is Jack Fletcher, son of Darren Fletcher. And some similar traits. A good, tall, strong frame. And it gives him the base that when he grows muscularly, muscularly, is that a word? I'm not too sure. But when he grows his muscular size... He could be a big, strong player. He's already got the tall frame. If he grows into that, you could have yourself a bit of a powerhouse unit here. But like his dad, Darren Fletcher, an incredibly hard worker. But that's where the comparisons stop, in my opinion. In terms of technically what he does with the ball, he's, he's very, very different. He isn't your kind of robust double pivot player. He is someone who wants to get forward into the final third. He is someone who wants to start a little bit higher. Receive the ball on the back foot and play on the half turn. You guys know me, I love a half-turn player. Fletcher is exactly that. Receiving the ball on the back foot, getting on the turn and looking to drive at the opposition. And that's something he does very, very well in the centre of the pitch. Driving, you know, really striding and carrying the ball forward through these phases, but also the ability to cutely dribble at times as well. Getting the ball, take these, these small little touches to really harm the opposition. Something else he's very good at, as you would expect from a midfielder, is his passing game. Someone who is, again, capable of doing a little bit of everything. He can drop deep and kind of link play with the others, play a bit slower, keep it ticking over. But then he can quickly speed up the play, move it forward, start looking for these long balls into the channel for his wingers to attack, a clipped ball over the top for his striker to attack. And of course, the ability, like we've said already, to get himself into the final third, where he is a threat, where he does score goals, he does create chances, and his impact in the final third is very, very impressive. 17 years old, a bright future ahead of him, in my opinion, and a player which seems to have the, the physical, but also the technical profile, where he could be one of the earlier ones to break into the squad. In terms of, again, if we're talking about preseason, he's definitely a player which could be given an opportunity. 
I really like a lot of what he has to offer. I think he's a really, really good young player. He excites every time you watch him. So definitely keep an eye out for him. And then we've got the last player, Cher Lacey. 16 years old, we've covered him before. He's got a full video if you want to go check it out. Wow. Wow, I think as Manchester United fans in recent years, we have often looked over at our City rivals and thought they do things well, which we just don't do. They created a Phil Foden, we don't do that. We've created someone quite similar here. Now, of course, it's important not to put too much pressure on him. He's not the next Phil Foden, he's the first Cher Lacey, and that is how we should look at it. But it's very difficult not to make the comparisons, because the way that he carries the ball, the way that he glides across the pitch, the way that he moves inside onto his stronger left foot is glorious to watch at times. He loves kind of drifting into these areas, and like I said, he, he really glides past players. He's not a player which massively relies on a massive burst of pace or ridiculous other body strength. This is all about low center of gravity, incredible agility, and the ability to move the ball at speed, manipulating the opposition, touching the ball with both feet, which again, I always think is important to keep the ball away from the opposition. Dribbling with both feet is very, very effective. And then in the final third, he's got that kind of gold dust a little bit. He can play these reverse passes in behind for the forward. He can play these random passes which are like lifted over the defence which no one else is really seeing. He can shoot from distance, he can go wide and he can cross a ball into the box. He's got it all, his ball striking is very good. He, again, he's a player who lights up the pitch every single time that he plays. And I think he could make it to the top level. The concern for him would be the physicality. Does he have the physicality? Particularly in English football, there always tends to be this thing where smaller players aren't given the same opportunities as those big guys who run hard and cover a lot of ground. They don't tend to be given as many opportunities, so Lacey might struggle to break into the first team. Again, it might be a case of needing a few loans. If that is the case, it has to be the right club. It has to be a club which wants to dominate the ball and try and break teams down. Lacey does not need to be in a side which is parking the bus and playing long ball football. It's just not going to suit him. and It's not really going to aid his development as much. So I think he will need a loan move eventually, perhaps in one more year's time, once he's recovered from injury. After that, he probably needs, needs a loan move, but it's going to be really interesting to watch his development. Again, a player which in four years' time, maybe five years' time, could be a regular for Manchester United, particularly if we are a more technical side by then and the pathway is good to get him into the team, we are looking at a potential really special player. A really special player and, of course, all round, a really special team. Their performances this season have been absolutely brilliant. Disappointed a little bit in Europe, but these things happen. In the league, they've been phenomenal. They're currently top of the table, trying to battle off Manchester City below them. Hopefully, they go all the way and do it till the end of the season. Will they? Not sure. We'll have to wait and see. But in terms of what they've done so far, they've been very impressive, and there's some really good talents in there. Like I said, I have done specific videos on a few of them. If you would like more of those videos on the other guys, let me know in the comments down below. But apart from that, we are finished for today. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.